Hi everyone and welcome back to the Organized Notebook. In this video, we wanted to show you how to build a menu planner using Notion. The holidays are coming closer, so this is a great way to plan and store recipes and menus, whether it's for special occasions like Thanksgiving and Christmas or for a simple friends get together. If this is helpful, it would help us out a lot if you could subscribe, like, and click the notification bell. So let's dive right in. First, let's title our menu planner, menu planner. And we'll go ahead and choose an icon by clicking add icon and going to icons and we'll choose a fork and knife like this. And if you'd like, you can add a cover. We're not going to add a cover for this one, but you're welcome to do so by clicking add cover. Now, if we click the three dots on the top right hand side, you can do small text full width. And this is going to give us more space on the page, as you can see. And in this menu planner, we are going to have two main databases. One database is going to be for storing your menus. And the second database is going to be for having your recipes. So both are going to be in gallery view because we think that they look better. So if we type slash gallery, we can make the first gallery view database plus new database. And we're going to call this menus. And then we are going to create another gallery view below that by typing slash gallery view. And we are going to title this one recipes. And we are going to try to connect recipes to our menu so that you can connect multiple recipes relating to that menu. So let's first work on our recipes database. As you can see, the default shows the inside of it. So we don't want that. So first thing we have to do is to go to the three dots here and start messing with the layout settings. So if we click layout, then we can first choose whether or not to show the database title and we can choose card preview. And in this case, we want page cover and card size. Since we might have many recipes, we'll go ahead and keep it to medium so not large and you can choose to fit the image or not and you can choose wrap all properties or not so we think that this is fine for now we may tweak things a bit more later and now let's say that we want to add a recipe here so we're going to remove this pre-made checklist inside and now we're going to edit the properties so if we delete this created we don't need that and tags could be useful in case that it's related to the recipe. So let's just pretend that we are making a Italian dinner menu and we want to serve spaghetti with meatballs. So this could be spaghetti with meatballs. And the tags could be Italian. And we can add another property, which is a multi-select which would be for the course. So this is a main dish. So we're going to put main. And the third property we can add is what kind of ingredients are used. So if you really just want to see what ingredients are needed for a recipe, you could add that as a multi-select as well. And we will name this ingredients. And for this, we would need beef, well, ground beef, we would need spaghetti, we would need tomato sauce, and probably some other ingredients, but we will just keep it like this so it's easier to see. And let's actually just choose the same color for all of them so it's clear. And now we should add a URL property in case this recipe comes from a web source. And then here you could add your main recipe. So what's also useful with Notion is that you can actually use it with Web Clipper. So if you come across a recipe that you want to add to this database, you can do so through Web Clipper. And we'll show you that after we add this one. So now we're going to add a cover photo for the spaghetti with meatballs so we can change cover on Splash. And then we can look for spaghetti with meatballs. And we can just click here. And that's it. So you would store the recipe inside, obviously, and then we want to show these properties on the outside. So we can go to properties here and turn on course, ingredients, and tags. So now we see that it's a main dish. 
these are some of the ingredients and that it's Italian. And then what we want to do is to connect our spaghetti with meatballs to a menu. So now if we go up here, we can call this Italian dinner night. And we can remove this property like we did with the other. And we can add tags such as whether or not this is a special occasion or is it a holiday meal and so on. So this one could just be a dinner night. And let's just go ahead and choose the same colors here as well so it doesn't get confusing. And then what we need to do is to relate the two together. So if we want to relate the Italian dinner night with spaghetti with meatballs, we can add the relation through spaghetti with meatballs. So if we add plus add property and we go relation, we can choose to relate it to our menus. And we can show on menus so that it doesn't get confusing and add relation. So now we can choose in this Italian dinner night like this, and we see it here under menus. And if we go to Italian dinner night, we'll see that spaghetti with meatballs is added here. And some other things that could be useful is if we can see the ingredients and tags and things like that here. So what we wanna do is to add roll up properties. So if we go plus add property here, and we can do roll up, we can select the relation, which is the recipes, and we can choose the property, which would be the ingredients. And what we want to do is show unique values. So if there's multiple that uses spaghetti, we'll only see one spaghetti here. And we can name this ingredients. And the other thing we can do is use the tags that show up on the recipes also in the menu. So if we do add property, then we can do roll up again. And this time we can do things like type and we can select recipes and the property would be the tags and we can do show unique values as well like this. So now we see that it is for dinner night and these are ingredients that might be used here in this menu and then the type. And now what we can do is show this on the outside. So if we go to properties and we turn on ingredients, we turn on the tags and the type. Now you can see all of the important information at one glance. And then what we can do is add a cover photo. So now again, we have to clear this and we can add a cover and we can change the cover to something Italian. So we can just type Italian food into Unsplash and then we can just choose one of these. So let's just go with this and we can show it by going to layout and card preview to page cover. So now we have a photo here for Italian dinner night and recipes over here. So now let's say that we wanted to add another dish to our Italian dinner night, for example, some garlic bread. And then what we can do is tag it Italian and the course would now be side and let's put it with the same color and ingredients would be bread and we would need garlic and olive oil. And let's also make these the same color like so. And then we want to add it to the menu, which is Italian dinner night. And then you could add the recipe inside here. And let's add a cover photo. So change cover and we'll look for garlic bread and then what we can do is now we can see like this. And then if we go here, you'll see that all of the ingredients are now added like this. So now the thing that's missing is that we want to see our recipes inside here as different courses. So what we can do is actually to make a database template by going to this blue button and doing plus new template. And we're going to call this menu template 
And what we want to do is to add a linked view database. So we type slash link, linked view, and we want to link to view database of our recipes. And now when we do this, you'll see everything here. But what we want to see is actually what's linked to the specific menu template. So we need to actually filter it by menus and we want to filter it by menu template and save for everyone. And the next thing we want to do is to actually group it by the course as well. So we can go to group and group by course. And what that does is we're going to get to see it based on whether it's a main dish or a side dish. And if you add more, you can obviously organize it more that way as well. And you can slide this so that the side dish comes before the main dish and so on. You can choose to hide empty groups and then we can test it out. So if we go out now and we go to Italian dinner night, then we can click on menu template and it should show us our menu here. So now we see the garlic bread here and the main dish like this. So this is a great way to plan your menus. And one more thing we can do is just clean up the database titles a bit. So if we go back out here and we click menu template, edit, then we can remove this database title so it looks a bit cleaner. And we can go to layout, show database title off, and actually one more thing we can add to this is a notes section in case you want to add some notes to your menu. So we could just put notes and we can change this into heading three and slash divider. And you could put some bullet points and duplicate them with com control or command D like this and back. And we can even set this as a default template. So if we go here, set as default, for all views and menus. So then every time you add a new menu, it's going to automatically pull this up. So now let's check it out by going in here. And we actually have to delete everything in this page in order to see it. Then we can test menu template. And now we see no database title and the side dish, main dish, and some additional notes. And now we can actually clean up also the titles inside here. So we can do slash heading three and add menus and slash divider. And then we can remove the database title by going to layout and then toggling off show database title. And we can do the same here as well. So if we add slash heading three recipes, and slash divider. And then we can remove the recipes from here by going to the three dots layout and hiding database title. And finally, what we want to show you is that you can actually add recipes also through Web Clipper. So we'll leave the link to the Web Clipper Chrome extension in the description below. But if you go to Google Chrome and let's say that we're planning for a Thanksgiving menu, and then what we can do is you can connect your web clipper to the recipes. So we have recipes and we have our menu planner here. So we're going to put it like this and we can save it to recipes. So if we save page like this, and if we go back to our Notion page, it's going to appear here. So now if we click it open, we can now retitle this roast turkey and we can tag it Thanksgiving and we can change this to the same color. And the course obviously is the main dish. Ingredients would be turkey and we can also see what other ingredients are listed here. So we have turkey, there's onion, lemon, apple. So you can just add whatever you want here to the ingredients. And we're going to create a new menu, which is going to be called Thanksgiving dinner. So we can call this Thanksgiving dinner. And the tag is going to be a holiday menu. And then we're going to add a cover photo. So let's change the cover photo to Thanksgiving. And if we click something like this and we load the menu template, 
We can now go to our roast turkey and we can add it to our Thanksgiving dinner. And now what's going to happen is if we go here, you'll see all of these details reflected here. And now if you want to add a photo to this, you can go to add cover and we can go over to Google Chrome. We can choose this photo. So then we can do copy image address. And if we go back to our Notion page, we can change cover and we can add it as a link like so. And now we have our picture and a really nice recipe like this. So it's also very useful to use Notion's web clipper inside a recipe database. And as you can see, you can plan your holiday dinners, your dinner nights and anything like this. So that's the basics of how to create a menu planner using Notion. We hope that this was useful for you. We'll leave the link to the completed version of this template in the description below. Let us know if you have any comments, questions, or anything that was confusing in this video, and we hope to see you in the next one.